up, the all-new Brain Eater Show. We're here backstage at Irving Plaza with Dino from Fear Factory. <laughs> How you doing? I'm here on the Brain Eater Show. How long did it take you to write or produce Mechanized? Um, it was actually pretty quick in the writing process. It took about three and a half months to write the album and about two months to record it. So it was actually uh, pretty quick. Uh, you know, in a lot of our previous Fear Factory records, it took a long time. We always took like a year to do an album, but uh, yeah. this album we wanted to get it out as quick as possible, but without really sacrificing any of the, you know, <clears throat> the you know the writing on it. We wanted to really, you know, it just happened really fast, but we really kind of took our time in a way, and we just really thought it out. Really, we just had a lot more preparation before we, we actually started doing it because I had written some stuff on drum machine, and <clears throat> so I was a lot more prepared. So we actually went into uh, <clears throat> to write the album. It was really fast. Inspiration in writing? Um, I think my inspiration in writing was just the fact that you know I was back with Bird again, back in the band, and just the excitement between working with him again, me and him together and collaborating again, it was really exciting. I think that's one, one of the things that really helped it go so fast as well. And your factory is not doing any touring or anything like that? Well, your factory is like going to be forever. Yeah, we I got mean, a, we got a, we got a history. I, you know, well, I can be like 20 years from now, I'd still want to go see your concert, you know? And well, maybe we'll yeah, yeah. Never, It never gets old to, yeah, to yeah, a lot of people, always, a lot of the fans, you know? Of course, I, yeah, Nobody I grows out of self bias or less resistant. Of course, well, I, yeah, right now there's nothing going on. Uh, we'll just, uh, time will tell us how to go. We have a new album out! What do you do to prepare for a show? Um, really, um, I can't eat too close to a show because if I eat too close to a show, I'll throw up yeah. or I'll get like acid reflux. So I usually eat hours before. Um, of course, you got to go to the bathroom because you don't want to be on stage and have to piss or do number two. Um, <laughs> stretch out, definitely stretch out. And then because now I'm doing double duty, I'm doing Divine Heresy and Fear Factory. Uh, after I get off stage with, with Divine Heresy, I just chill. Do you have any favorite places to play? New York obviously is one of them. Um, Los Angeles, all the big cities, Chicago. <clears throat> you know, when we play all the big cities like Dallas, Houston, out in Texas, it's amazing. Um, you know, most of Europe is really good, you know, Kids are really <clears throat> rabid out there, and <clears throat> also South America is amazing too. A lot of the Hispanics go really crazy, you know, like in Chile and Argentina, and Mexico, and Brazil. It's just really crazy out there. So there's two new members in the band now, right? Well, what it is is... Me and Byron? Or yeah, well, what it is is that it's mainly me and Burton are the two original members. Um, and we <clears throat> we have two other guys that uh, are with us, which is Gene Hoagland, who's a legendary drummer. Right. You know, he's been in every metal band you can think of, from Death to Strap a Young Lad to Death Clock. Strout was actually in the band 
when I was out of the band, he was actually in the band mm -hmm. for a good six or seven years. And then so mm -hmm. when I came back, he stayed. So right. he's kind of a new member, but not really. <laughs> Pretty much music in general really influences me. I, I hear, I can hear anything to like the most crappiest stuff to the most amazing stuff, and it influences me. You know, I'm always constantly have music going in my head. I dream music. I think music. I have sex to my wife. Music <laughs> in my head. You know, um, just you know, when I was younger, it was like ACDC, Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, and stuff like that. And then obviously, you know, when all the heavy stuff came out, like Metallica and Slayer, and I got into all that stuff. And then it just kind of progressed from there. Where are you most excited to play? On this tour? On this tour. Well, we played a festival last night in Montreal. It was called the Montreal Heavy Metal Festival. I was there. And we played with Slayer. We played with Testament. Huh? Uh, Anvil was there. Which was really, it was cool seeing those guys after seeing the movie, you know. I haven't seen them since then. Um, and, um, that was I last think, night? Yeah, last that was last, wow. yeah, it was last night. Cool. So I played, we played the festival last night, and then I got a flight last night after the festival, and I flew over here to New York. Busy man, busy, busy man. man. Busy man. Can you tell us about like the evolution of Fear Factory? How has it changed over time? Well, it's really kind of funny because back in the back in the early days when we were doing our demo, we kind of started off as like we did like three demos, and the first demo was like more of a real industrial demo. It was like a drum machine, just guitars and bass and a bunch of effects, and then and then the second demo was kind of more a death metal demo and then like by the time the album came out it was kind of more death metal with some industrial influences and then it wasn't until we met up with a guy named Reese Fulber who's a he is a producer from Canada he was also in a band called Frontline Assembly we brought him in to do some remixes for us called Fear is the Mind Killer this is back in 1992 and we saw how much the electronic elements the electronic industrial element worked with the metal element and we kind of like, you know, that's when they basically the two really, you know, meld, uh, gelled together and we knew that this is what we wanted to do and so by the time the third, the second album came out, D Manufacture, that was when we re were really able to like expand on what we were doing and that was when we really solidified our sound, you know. And I think that Burton's vocal style, the, the heavy verses, the melodic choruses, you know, even from the first album, from the first demos, you know, that pretty much influenced a whole, the whole scene, the whole generation of metalheads. Because now oh, yeah. you can't, you can't name a band that doesn't do that, that doesn't do heavy vocals with melodic course, Kill Switch Engage, All That Remains, I mean, Chimera, I mean, Azalea Dine, every band has pretty much adopted that vocal style. And so we've, so for when we do a mechanized, we were like, you know, we didn't want to change the formula up too much. So um, we pretty much kept the same ide ideology when we first started. Out of all of the festivals that you guys have played at, what, which one would you go back to as a fan? Wow. Well, the one I'm looking forward to playing that we haven't played yet is Sonosphere, and that's what the big four. Slayer, yes. Metallica, yes. Anthrax, yes. And Megadeth. Yes. And that's the one I'd really look forward to playing, and probably that one. I'll yeah. probably want to go back and play that one again because it's like, you know, get to see all four of those bands on one bill, which really kind of sucks because we're not going to get that out here. It's really good that you know, uh, Dave Mustaine and, and the guys of Metallica to you know forget about their past and just become friends again and make it all that's happen. That's cool. Yeah, that's that was, really cool. Yeah. So the I mean, drama if, has if anybody, ended. If anybody who can who can really bring back metal even bigger, it could be Metallica, you know what I mean? 
like if they did a tour like that in America, you know, with the big four, with, you know, Metallica, Ghost Slayer, Megadeth, Anthrax, right, and other bands, they could make it into a festival. They wouldn't have a venue big enough to contain all that metal. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. It'd be sick. Yeah. Are you leaning more towards metal now with the, the music that you're writing, or are you gonna still throw in some of that industrial um, with the new stuff? Good question. I mean, I think that you know, I, I just I, on this record we wanted to bring it back heavy. You know what I mean? Yeah. We wanted to come back aggressive. You know, we wanted to come back like again, like when we first started. But I think that you know, I think it's always gonna be. I think. Those two elements are always going to be apparent in our music, and sometimes one could be more, sometimes the other could be more. You know what I mean? So we'll see what happens in the next one. Yeah, depends on how you're feeling, right? Yeah, you're feeling saucy. <laughs> saucy. <laughs> <laughs>